I hope everyone is well. Welcome to my channel if you've not been here before. It's where I talk about twin flame process. So this video, um, I'm going to do some cards in a bit, but I just wanted to tell you something about what's happened in my process <laughs> that's kind of weird and funny and interesting. So, um, and we just come through this dark moon, this new moon, uh, and it's some some of it's occur well it's all occurred really M most of it's occurred during this moon so uh, a lot of fairy stuff so really like you know how everything in your physical experience is about this process so everything shows up <laughs> as we've said before because it's shifting you into through your process basically and obviously ultimately into your reunion so and how i'm guided through this process is to see all of that energy playing out through the physical realm in terms of my life so i've had a few really strange experiences that have kind of linked up lately and happen and come to kind of there's something happened around them this moon so firstly i just want to share with you this really unusual thing that happened so it started a while back actually um, and it's this woman that I went to for, um, she does like beauty treatments and stuff. So I went to see her for something. And um, as I was lying there on the uh, couch and we were talking, she was telling me about this. I don't know, people just start to tell me things, you know. She, um, I think I told her that I worked as a psychic. So she was starting to tell me something about herself about this situation that was going on in her life, like a family thing, uh, something that wasn't to her pleasing, you know, that she wasn't happy with. <clears throat> She's got a big extended family and they're all very close and they all interact all the time. Anyway, so as she was talking, I said to her, so your grandfather really liked his holidays, didn't he? Because I can see him and he's holding a glass up and he's going, cheers. And it looks like he's somewhere very hot. He's got his top off and he's sitting in a bar near a beach. <clears throat> and she was like, oh my God. She said, I have that exact picture on my phone. And then she showed, after the treatment, she showed me. And it was exactly what I'd seen. Um, he was sitting there at a bar and he was holding a glass up saying cheers with a tan. It was the same person that I saw and everything. So just that really you know and I said well, he just wants you to be happy just try to be happy try to like forget not think about things that don't make you happy he says enjoy your life as much as possible and that's all pretty much a given right you could say oh everybody likes the holidays so but you know I saw him and that's that and then um uh she was wanting to get pregnant and I don't normally you know you always, these things, people being psychic, it's always like, oh, you don't predict pre pregnancy, you shouldn't predict pregnancy because it's too much responsibility and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes you just end up saying whatever it is that you pick up and you don't think about, it. you know, the whole thing is that you don't, not thinking and you just say it and it just comes out. So she was talking about this and this is one of the things she was unhappy about. And I just said, well, you're going to have a little girl because um, I can see her. She's what she looked. I described what she looks like, and I said, "There's a really strong link. Your mother, you, and this little girl that you're going to have anyway." And um, so that was that on that appointment. And then I went away, and I didn't see her for about a year. Oh, no, hang on, how long was it? No, I had a, a session, a, like a few different, a few appointments in a succession. So probably about three months actually. And at the this was the last appointment that I was going for. So, um, and we've been chatting, you know, I'd had a few sessions with her and she's really nice and everything. I like chatting to her and she's really easy to talk to. I think she's probably quite psychic herself. Oh, something happened because I told her about how sometimes I just woke up in the morning and I'd get this directive, like a voice saying uh, something to me that was like source. So I told her about that and it was really weird because one this appointment that I went in, she said she, it had happened to her. Like she'd woken up in the morning, she'd been worried about something, she did something about it, I inspired action. And then she woke up in the, the next morning and she heard this voice saying, that's it, leave it alone, you've done it, kind of a thing. And it was exactly the same thing that I've, I've described to her, I'd get. 
so she was she found that really interesting that she'd heard that she was like I knew it was like a, just a cut off I've been given a cut off so that right and then at the end of that session she's talking about wanting this baby again and I said well we already know you're having a little girl because I've quite clearly seen that and I had no doubt about that because I saw my friend's baby before she was born as well and I told her she was having a little girl and then she did so I actually had no doubt of what I was telling her was the absolute truth and then um um just as I was leaving and I was putting my coat on and she was talking about this I said October and I just literally blurted it out and I could see October in big letters like those uh, mirrors that you get in a dressing room with the lights around it, flashing lights, October in capital letters. So I said that, I just blurted it out, October. And then that was about a year and a half ago. And I didn't go back in for anything, but I have got a connection with her on Facebook because I was then thinking about going to, back to her for something else. So when I looked on there, and this is just a couple of months ago, um... I saw her saying she was about to take some time, she'd taken on board another employee and she was going to be taking some time off between October and December <laughs> this year. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's it. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. It's happened. And so I just said to her, I emailed her through there and I said, uh, you're pregnant, aren't you? <laughs> And she said yes, and she said it's a little girl, and she said she's due in October. So I said to her, this is all in email, I said, oh, she's going to be a Libra. Libra baby, brilliant, because Libras are, you know, uh, nothing wrong with anyone else, obviously, but Libras, well, I've got a thing about Libras. Anyways, <laughs> what with my twin being a Libra as well? So I just said that to her, and she said, oh, well, she's due at the end of October, so probably... That she, she, you know, she comes when she's due, she's not going to be, she's going to be a Scorpio. I said, oh, okay, fair enough. But I knew she was going to be a Libra. Anyway, so I did go and see her, and I went to see her yesterday. This is still during the moon, because it hasn't waned out yet, or whatever it does, or waxed out. And um, so I asked her how it's going and everything, and she said she's been to the hospital, and she said the baby's turned and it's ready to come, and she, they, they reckon it's about two weeks. So we were kind of just having a laugh about it, because I'd said it's going to be a Libra. And um, Libra finishes on the 23rd of October, but the baby isn't officially due till after that. But like they say, it's turned around. So she just said to me, she said, so when do you think the baby's going to come? And I said, well, let's look at it logically first of all so <laughs> you've got the doctor saying two weeks so two weeks from now uh, that was 14 days from the 7th that would make uh, 14 21 no hang on oh I don't know I can't work it out is that 21 days yeah well whatever so I just said logically then and between the 23rd and then I said and let me just tune in though and see and as soon as I stopped thinking I saw the 17th in my head and I said the 17th and I hadn't thought it I'd just seen it like it's written on a piece of paper and she said oh she said that's really interesting because I feel it's gonna she's gonna come through on the 18th so we were just like, that's it, we'll just have to wait and see, let's wait and see. It's quite exciting to see when the baby's coming and if, you know, I was like, well, maybe you're going to labour on the 17th and you have her on the 18th and then we'll both be right. Um, but I think it's the 17th because I saw the 17th. So just that, right? But then my whole twin flame process uh, is winding up now and I know that that's happening in October because they've already told me it's before the end of the summertime that's British summertime which ends on the 31st of October so it's almost as though her pregnancy and me knowing her and this connection that we've got with me being able to tell her these things is also connected to my process um, the baby is due basically on the 31st officially 31st is the end of British summertime. She's going to have this baby as a Libra. My twin is a Libra. She is 
uh, it's like everything that I've seen about her. When I saw October in really big letters with the light bulbs around, I didn't know at the time, but when they're telling me about her, they're also telling me about me. So they're telling me my reunions in October as well. So it's, the, it's like I'm able to read through her energy what's going to happen with me, right? And um, when I saw the 17th, uh, in like it's written down on a piece of paper, I cannot honestly not say that I feel like this is the day of my reunion as well because I think it is. I feel like it is and I don't, I feel like because everything's tied with what I've seen for her, it's like a birth, right? And they've always shown me rebirth like the Empress as the birth of the reunion and I just feel it's all tied together so I think 17th is for me as well. So. I just thought I'd put this video out and say that because if if I'm right, <laughs> I want it out there. I want to have said I want everybody to know that what I'm getting is that, and also because there's people that watch me that have been watching me for a really long time, and you know who you are if you've been watching me since right at the beginning. That if this 17th is uh, is the day, then that's really important for everybody, and that could be the day for them as well. Um, and even if you're not been following me for that long, maybe it's a really important date for you too. In some respect, if it's not reunion, it's because there's shifts you see that happen. So the other thing is, um, so that's that really. I just wanted to share that because it's all fascinating how it's every single thing in your physical experience, all your connections with people and everything, it's all about this, is that I had yesterday I've got a friend of me <laughs> who's somebody I've known for, for since I was in my early 20s um, who I disconnected from they're a narcissist aren't they all <laughs> and I disconnected from for a good like 20 years and then um, we got back in touch um, and it's not an easy connection because they're a narcissist, they basically never listen to me. I swear this person still knows nothing about who I am now because he just never listens about to me talk. He's either love bombing, so he's trying to get me to feel good by telling me things about myself that I should feel good about, that I, really it's just like, he might as well not bother because I only feel good about myself because I feel good about myself because I feel good about myself not because of any love bombing that's occurred, because I can quite see, clearly see that there's love bombing going on, and I'm just not interested in being, only feeling good, you know, with the push and pull of somebody else's, I should feel good. I feel good because I feel good. There's like inner strength around that, and it's like brushing off a, a fly or something that's buzzing around you with it, you know? It's like, oh, just get away with your love bombing kind of a thing. It's not, you're not having the effect that does, it doesn't have the desired effect that you want. It's not drawing me closer like a moth to a flame. You know, this person wants me to be the center of attention basically. So everything is designed to bring him into center of attention as far as my experience goes. And for me to revolve around him. So he gives out, you know, whatever he thinks will get that. So there's love bombing, and, it, and then there's attacking, if he doesn't get what he wants, he attacks and starts to tell me things that I've done wrong. And this is talking, we talk about 25 years ago, something I said to somebody or that I did <laughs> to try and make me feel bad, you know, um, if the love bomb is not working. So, and he called yesterday and again, it's just the same day as this other thing, the 17th. I'd had a few glasses of wine. And um, <clears throat> and it all started in again, so it starts off with the love bombing, and then, um, but the weirdest thing is, maybe because I'd had a couple of glasses of wine as well, that I, I've really had enough of this now, because the scenario has gone on for, for a very long time, and he doesn't change track, I mean, narcissists can't see what they do, so he's unable to, I suppose, to change track, and, um, it's futile though, it's a futile situation because he will never get what he wants. He will never be the center of my world again because I know what he is now. Not that I hate him or anything, he just will never be that. 
And at one point when we were younger, like my world did revolve around him until he did something so dreadful that I won't tell you about that I had to cut him out of my life because he just couldn't see how that could have possibly hurt me because everything should have been about him and not about me. But it did and it was something anybody would find really, really dreadful. So, um, but he just couldn't see that I should feel anything about it in relation to me, you know, he couldn't see that he'd really hurt me. Anyway, as they don't, and they don't want to see it, and they can't see it. So, but then I let him back in again. This is maybe about 10 years ago. And we have these conversations. And occasionally we have a, a point of connection where we're talking about something that we used to, because we were a team back then, and we did some kind of work, and I'm not telling you what it is, but <laughs> we did some work together. And we have that shared history. So sometimes we'll hit a point of like, having a really good communication, just talking about something that went on that was in the past where we hit a high point with that. It was a creative endeavour basically, so there's a lot of high points. Um, so we do have this shared history that was really good. Um, but then, <clears throat> um, like I say, a lot of the conversation, me now who I am and how my life has changed and what I do and the fact that I'm psychic and, the, you know, Basically, yesterday I was trying to tell him about this woman and the fact that I told, I basically told her when she was having a baby, and um, he just wouldn't listen. And literally, he was talking as I was trying to tell him, and then talking over me, his voice getting louder because he didn't want to hear me say it to him because he doesn't want to know anything, actually know anything about who I am now. He just wants to be the centre of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and differently than ever before, I said to him, I said, shut up, you, you're you not listening to me. He talked, literally, I mean, I'm not being harsh, he talked for half an hour about himself, and then when I went to tell him something about me, he just butted in straight away and tried to talk over me, and I just decided I wasn't having it anymore, because sometimes I just let it go, I let him carry on, um, and I just decided, no, I don't, this is not what I'm having in my life. I don't want this anymore. Uh, you know, you, you've got to listen to me. Find out who I am. He literally knows nothing about me. He doesn't know I've got a leak in the roof. He doesn't know that I've just bought a deep fat fryer. He doesn't know uh, even where I live or, you know, what I do or anything. He knows nothing about me because he never listens. He just wants to talk about himself. And um, so I just, uh, I just told him to stop. We had a conversation yesterday, and it went on for literally, it must be four hours, four hours of me trying to make him listen to me. And all I could hear was his voice in the background talking over me. And then he would, <laughs> and like I say, when I went quiet, so this is really interesting. When I went quiet, because it was quite exhausting, when I went quiet, He'd start with a love bombing because he was getting because I was quiet, so it was like he was getting what he wanted, and then he'd start love bombing, and then, <laughs> and then when I started to, love bombing in relation to who I used to be, so I ta start talking about me twenty years ago, and ha what ha what I ha had been to him twenty years ago, and this connection that we had. So it's not relevant now because I'm a different person now. And then when I tried to tell him that and who I am now, he would start attacking me and attacking me for things that I did 20 years ago or said to somebody 20 years ago. And when I said to him, I really know, I don't care what that person thinks about me. They're not in my life anymore and I don't care. I'm not interested in them. It's not, it, it bears no relation to how I'm feeling about myself <laughs> right now. You telling me that. Or, or trying to make me feel bad about that. I'm not feeling bad and I won't feel bad. And I'm not because I'm trying to like not feel bad, but just because I have no absolutely zero interest in what you're saying to me. But he, then his attacking would get even more. Then he'd bring in another thing that I did or said uh, uh, to somebody or a way that I behaved or, or uh, he actually brought in who I was ignoring now. And I'm like, this person wasn't even relevant in my life 25 years ago. I hardly knew them then. So, but now you're trying to make me feel bad that I'm not caring that they're in my life now. It was just the weirdest, 
weirdest thing that went on with me basically it wasn't horrible either it wasn't like we were arguing particularly it was just this resonance right of him being him in all these ways that he is narcissistic and me just not having it but the two things were not meeting in an argument and there was this other thing that happened that was really curious that was when <laughs> When I started to talk about myself, there's another thing that he was doing, right? When I started to then try and explain to him who I am and that I work with law of attraction, so how could I possibly feel bad? <laughs> when I know that feeling good is the only place I want to be, so not only are none of these things that he's trying to bring into me to either make me feel good or make me feel bad, <laughs> taking me out of my location of feeling good that's only ever about me and how I feel, and a selfish thing because that's what law of attraction is and not about what other people think about me or what, how I should feel in relation to that so I was trying to explain all of that to him and rather than listen to that he was then trying to show me on FaceTime literally talking over me trying to show me his um, he just had some filler done in his face <laughs> his tear trough fillers and make me look at that and talk about it. <laughs> and it was just the craziest interaction and then after, I guess, about, maybe it was th three hours of this, and we kept disconnecting, so it wasn't continual, because we kept losing connection. <laughs> like the phone thing, losing connection. And, um, and then we'd also, also revert to talking a little bit about what we do have a shared connection about in the past, which was our work, and hitting on a high point of that. <laughs> and both, like, meeting on that ground, and talking about something that was hilarious and having a laugh. So it's just really weird. And then all of a sudden, I just said, I've got to go now. <laughs> and he was like, okay. And it was just cut off. But no, again, no, like, <laughs> despite this, like, all this, like, love bombing and this Darvo, defend, attack, reverse, victim, offender stuff that had been going on, there was no kind of, like, none of it was personal. It was really weird. It was like he was just this narcissistic play out and I was in uh, in operation of not like, taking that on board so he was just literally came in sweeping in and it's months since I've talked to him to play this role in my process to like to, for me to see how I am now in relation to narcissistic endeavor the endeavor of a narcissist to take you away from your vibration so in that, right, he did actually did a huge service for me in coming in and playing that role, which I guess he's done my whole life since I've known him in playing that role. So seeing that, you know, and coming out of that, and, uh, you know, I went to bed last night and um, quite pissed off, quite, like, annoyed by it all, and then woke up this morning just laughing at the hilarity of it, because Sorso always sees everything as hilarious and good fun, right? <laughs> and knowing, of course, that he's just played a huge role in my expansion. And um, loving that for what it is, instead of any of that kind of like, oh, God, you know, he's this, he's that, da, 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 da. None of that. Just like, just like laughing at it for what it just did. And... Um, and then just like walking downstairs this morning and just saying, to, just source talking through me right as it does, saying like, so, and finding the whole thing funny and like, so, um, what I was saying was, so how do you, you know, there's all those things out there, how do you beat a narcissist or how do you um, win, you know, in a situation with a narcissist and just, just loving it basically. <laughs> Just loving it, just loving all of it, <laughs> loving the whole interplay, right? Loving that person, loving the experience of that person trying to knock you off balance and take you out of your vibration and the amount of energy <laughs> that is spent by a narcissist. And you know, and you've got the thing is, as well, I'm not maybe it sounds like I'm being a bit cruel or whatever because you know, he's not getting what he wants, he's, he's not getting that center of the unit but well, that's fine he's in a relationship with somebody he's got two adopted kids he's got lots of friends he's got lots of source 
<laughs> there's not like uh, he's not going to get what he wants it's just i'm a bigger challenge than any of that right for him it's some kind of mission in him like uh the power of him it's like quite hilarious the player and i've got a really funny feeling that now that's done um it's going to be completely different with me and him even though it wasn't in that conversation it's going to be completely different because it's all organized by source so like i say he was um you know really strong soulmate energy of that even with the thing that he did 25 years ago that was appalling that made me let go of him whoops not the camera it's the the nature of that relationship and the strength of what we're here to do, be for each other god knows what i am to him i'm not really sure and i, I can't think about that because that's out of my point of reference you see because I'm, you only focus on yourself and your own vibration or work. You can't focus on other people's and what they're all about. You just got to let go. So I just let go, right? And just love it all for what it is. So just that, right? But it's so interesting how it's all just coming on the moon. Oh, the other thing that happened yesterday with all the bugs and the slugs that I've had the, the kind of the fear issue with since I've been in this house is I walked straight in for my appointment with this woman that I've told about the baby and one little bug was crawling across the carpet and I literally looked at it and I was like oh little baby you're in a completely the wrong place and I just gently picked it up and I put it out the back door so and that's so different to where I've been in relation to I would have like two years ago I'd be like oh another one it's killing it and putting it in the bin but it was completely different and even in the way I just saw it it just looked like a little I see now these bugs, they look like they're, they're just the same as the cat that comes to sit on my windowsill. Just the same. They were no different. I don't stroke them. Although I did try and pick up, if you don't like spiders, shut your ears now. Because I do actually love spiders. I've always loved spiders. And there was a great big one in my bedroom that came through the window at the end of summer a couple of weeks ago. And he was on the curtain, he or she. And I thought, well, that's no good. You can't live here because and they, I know they're coming to hibernate in the winter. So I went to pick him up with my bare hand and he leapt. I didn't realise they could jump. He leapt about seven foot across the bedroom and landed on the carpet. So it just goes to show, right, that they actually don't want any contact <laughs> with human beings. Oh, my God the way he jumped out of fright and shock that this human hand was about to try and pick him up. They are terrified of us. So then I got a sock on my hand and I let him go into the sock and I put him in the cupboard under the stairs where he can hibernate for the winter. Although I think I saw him making his way across the room the other day. So I just left him alone. It's downstairs. Probably decided he's found a better place. Maybe there's another one. I don't know. Anyway, so that's all that. So... <clears throat> So I'm just going to do some cards and um, now and let's see if they've got anything to say to everybody that is about anything that's relevant. Um, coming towards the end of, well we're into October, just through a moon, full moon on the 20th. So they're showing me the moon and it's behind some clouds and they're showing me in front of that a hand reaching out. This looks like something's dripping from the hand. It could be money. Yeah, I think it's little coins. Um, wise investment, they're saying. But I feel like it's a representation. Wise investment. I think they might be talking vibrationally, so kind of like, oh, they're showing me the scales, like Libra. Um, what you put in is what you get out. So this is about vibration, right? What you put into your, so it's manifestation energy, basically, that we're coming into up to this full moon. What you put into your vibration is what you get out. So if you've already put everything that you want in your vibration, 
whether you want to get back into your physical life. You already know that that's there. Then what you put into your vibration following that is only feeling good. And it's a feeling good that's a disconnect, so it doesn't have to be about anything. So it's not like you're thinking about that thing that you put into your vibration and trying to feel good. You just put it in there, you let go, and then you feel good. If you haven't already put what you want into your vibration, then just visualise what you want and put that into your vibration. When you're thinking about manifesting love into your life in the form of a person, then think about, if you haven't already done it, think about specifically how you want that to feel and how you want that to look. And you don't have to do it. It's not like you're not expected to do this every minute of the day and cause yourself loads of resistance and pain by thinking about something that you don't have yet. You just do it when you're feeling like doing it and let it float through you and let it and there it will be and then you let go again and you stop thinking about it and you try not to hook into any emotion about it so you just visualize what you want don't hook into the emotion of what it is you're visualizing necessarily but then hook into feeling good just generally right because that's where people get confused with law of attraction they think they have this thing in their vibration that they want and then they have to feel good about that thing and that is not the case you put what you want in and then you let go of it and you don't think about it anymore and you feel good about just fit you just feel good without anything so you're not trying to have anything that you feel good about there's no resistance at all that way right because if you've got something you haven't got it and you're trying to feel good about it even though you haven't got it you're going to cause a load of resistance right you could cause pain so <clears throat> Right, let's get some cards going. Oh. Four, brand new journey, zero point. Hierophant relationship. And in relation to, let's not forget, the moon. We've got that moon coming and we just come out of one as well. So we literally, we're just starting a new journey now because we're coming out of that new moon heading towards the full one. So brand new energy. Five of Pentacles and that's what you're separated from. So the only thing obviously that you need to be aware of is are you separated from source or not? It's not about another person. It's got to be about are you in, are you at one with your vibration? Are you in a harmonious awareness of your feeling good at all times, despite the fact of what is there showing for you in the physical world, right? Because the physical world might be stating that you are apart from something, another person perhaps, but you're not being asked to hook into that person, you're being asked to hook into source, and source is feeling good. So if you hook into the source, then everything in your physical life will start to revolve around you hooking into source so it'll start showing up better so an opportunity to do that really is and that's what they said at the beginning yes we've now got clean slate following dark moon opportunity hook into feeling good again so whatever showed up for you during that dark moon it might be like the thing that's happened to me it was a very powerful moon in terms of relationship because it was a relational moon because it's in libra so could be something like that narcissistic um play out let go of it. Whatever showed up for you, let go of it. Clean slate and get back to just feeling good, right? So that's your, it's like back to school time is what they're saying of feeling good. Okay, let's have a look here. Page of Swords, lessons in the mind, messages in the mind as well. So, um, and also a one and brand new again. So it's like brand new mental energy, basically. Put everything to rest that's just happened to you. Let go of it. Get on with um, inspired thought, inspired thinking. Um, interactions with others, let go of them as though they're activities that you've just taken part in, right? So you could say, I've just cleaned the bathroom, so now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to think about cleaning the bathroom anymore, am I? Why would you think about cleaning the bathroom when you've just cleaned it? So just like interactions with people, you've had an interaction with someone, don't think about it anymore because you've had it now, it's gone. There's no point thinking about it now. That's done. Let go of it, right? It's the same as anything else, any other activity. 
Let's go here. Oh, look, Ace of Swords, brand new communication and brand new activity in the mind. So inspired thought is what they want now. So we're working up towards this full moon and the full moon has got the possibility of manifestation because it's manifesting through higher energy because the full moon is enlightenment. So it's really high energy. So it's the possibilities of manifesting that we're working up to. Right. So now it's about getting to grips with what that is that you want. And if you haven't put it in there, put it in there. And if you have, know that it's in there, know that you want it, know that it's coming to you and work from that operation, from that positive energy, right? And then just get on with more um, inspired action, inspired thought, inspired way of existing, right? In a greater sense to let go and go with the flow. And from wherever you're standing in your particular shoes, in your particular physical location, your physical experience, right now just know that everything's working out for you always working out for you twin flame process just might mean you have a little way to go yet before you get there so where are you, are you at in your process can you see what's going on in your physical life and relate it to your process and why you're going through that in your physical life and what that demand is being put on you energetically what um, repercussions there are energetically and what's going on in your physical life so everything is shifting you physically and it's shifting your twin. Things will happen to you and that's going to shift your twin. All right. So it's shifting you both into more strength and more power, basically. Three of cups, happiness and joy, creating through happiness and joy, the moon. Knight of cups, bringing love, romance on the way. And Eight of Pentacles, which is work in the physical world and um, the connection that you have physically with your physical world. Creation underneath Three of Pentacles, creation in the physical world. So now is the time for creation, right? So what can you do that is creative and how can you bring yourself into a better feeling place by how you use your mental energy to create in the physical world? So you've got your feeling good vibration which doesn't have to be about anything and it shouldn't actually be about anything in the physical world at all. It has to just be a sense of feeling good for the sake of feeling good because feeling good is a better place than feeling bad, right? And then what can you do with the rest of your time? Anything that's inspired, anything that's going to be um, higher energy of any kind, any kind of creation. You could, you know, even a to-do list can be creative. If you love making the to-do list you've got to love what you do everything you have to love what you do don't do if you're going to do something love it right so see the beauty of everything and remember you know you're not here for very long really in the greater scheme of things so what's the point of being here and not loving absolutely everything as much as you can and especially when you know that everything is part of your process and everything is meant to be happening to you Love it more. And that's not saying you might not experience fear because you can still experience fear. Learn to love the experience of experiencing fear because know that it's shifting something. And um, <clears throat> you might not love it when you're going through it because it might feel really fearful, but you can still know that it's got it's, it's doing its desired effect, right? It's shifting fear in the connection. So you can certainly love it from afar even though you're going through it head over heart so that's mental energy heart energy again it's like finding that zero point which is a complete let go the torment of the ego i telling you that everything is wrong that you're going through and everything is something to be feared and everything is something that you should feel pain about or worry about or stress about or hate or feel beleaguered about or picked on or pushed out or you know that's the ego trying to tell you something's wrong that's all it is everything is always right heart energy is source energy it's higher energy it's feminine energy it's the lightness of being it's the going with the flow it's the seeing beyond the physical dimension and its limitations right so it's letting yourself go it's letting yourself go and feel free and feel good in relation to whatever it is you're experiencing in the physical world. And that is a work in progress. Creation. Shift point. 
tower ending. Sorry, I just had to, um, I'm, just, I'm trying to work out the 17th, you see. Um, I mean, 17 reduces down to an 8. I already figured that out. <laughs> an 8 is a connection, right? I've got that 8 there. But the... Um... Oh, I just digress a minute. The 17th is the day that me and my twin stopped talking in 2007. It's the same day of the month. Ooh, so that's a big one, right? Anyway, back to the cards. Let's have a look. The Fool, Brand New Beginning, Ace of Pentacles, Physical World. Eight of Pentacles, Four of Cups. Dreams and desires, things that are out of reach. Emotions that you've had to let go of. You've had to let go of them maybe because they feel so bad to feel them, right? So the only thing that you can do on this process, through this process, is let go of them at some point. Otherwise, they're just crushing emotions. Okay. Moon. Destiny, judgment. So we've got full moon. We've got destiny and judgment showing up on that. Hmm. Three of cups. <clears throat> King of cups. That's the masculine coming into the heart through pure joy of emotion. So you're feeling good is what it's all about in terms of your connection and that's not feeling anything about them, okay? And it doesn't mean that you don't feel something about them. You can know that you feel something about someone and then you can let go and you don't have to remind yourself every minute of every day that you feel something about that person if it's not making you feel good. It's like you just put it on a shelf. I know how I feel about that person I know how I will always feel about that person. I don't need to keep looking at that and deciding again and again and again how do I feel about that person because I already know so just let it go and then just choose to feel good, find a way to feel good by letting go of them. Okay. However, and that's when they come back, when you thoroughly let go and you're not making everything it's very curious that this, um, you see, everything has a parallel. Like, I just go back again, digress, to this narcissistic play out that occurred yesterday in my physical existence because where I've got somebody who is trying to make themselves the centre of my experience and everything revolve around them. And my thoughts and my feelings all must be about them in relation to how I feel about myself. And the let go, right, that I was being asked to create through the play out, the narcissistic interaction, the interaction with that person, my let go of what they were, tr what was trying to, what was trying to be done there, right? That let go is, is that a symbolic let go, you see, because you go through so much in this process and everything that's being asked of you is what's being asked of you energetically, right? So it's like, have you come into the power of letting go? And now we're going to give you a challenge on your power of letting go. So we're going to give you an offering of what is hooking you in to something. It doesn't matter what hooking you in to something, hooking you in to fear, taking you out of your vibration. I had another thing happen as well, I won't go into it now, but another one that was trying to hook me into taking me out of my vibration. These things keep coming and coming and coming until you learn to not hook into feeling bad and you're in a place of let go. And then, even then, not just an accidental let go, but a fully aware let go i.e. like you're standing on the top of a mountain with nothing around you and you are just seeing it all out there and none of it is attached to you. Nothing, not family, not friends, not this thing that happened, not that thing that happened, not the thing in front of your very nose. All right, and as you let go and let go and let go and let go and let go of everything that is and you shut your eyes and for a minute you see a date in your head, right? 
because that information only comes through in a full let go. That's when you get those things coming through. So it's all, it's, like we said it before, it's like, you, it's like a storm and it's coming down onto the head of a pin. It's what the physical existence is, right? And the ego storm of the mind constantly working and working and working and working and working and thinking and thinking and thinking and trying to work things out from the ego. And all that is a storm that you let go of and then you settle down it's like a leaf falling to the ground, right? And stopping moving and everything's still and calm. And that's where things change and that's where things shift. It's in the let go that they shift. See, you're creating physical experience, shift, tower, let go. Let go of ego, brand new energy, start again. Um, Hierophant, let's go there. Divine love. So everything is about that. So everything that you relate to is about that. But it's not about relationship if you can understand, right? So it's how do you relate? How do you relate to your own feeling good, to your own vibration, to source? Source. Because this is what your work is and this is what your learning is, to learn how do you relate to your vibration or self, not relationship with person, right? Because this divine love, twin flame connection, is not relationship with person, it's connection to source being shown to you through the manifestation in the physical world of somebody who is corresponding to the same vibration as you. So the relationship to source comes first, relationship to another human being also connected to source in the flesh comes after that. What is source? Source is feeling good. Source is happiness. That's all it is. It isn't any other bollocks. <laughs> Or BS, it's just relationship to feeling good outside of human activity, right? So again, just refer back yesterday, narcissistic play out. I did not get hooked into that in any way. I did not get hooked into the drama of the narcissist or to the fact that I was even having that interaction. I just remained in a state of happiness of being me in the moment despite what was being shown to me what has been asked to like engage in in the physical that could have taken me out of that place in whatever way or or even when I was being asked to being asked by the narcissist to go to a higher place of feeling good because of their love bombing no I just stayed in my own feeling good because I like my own feeling good I don't need to be love bombed I don't need to hear it. It does nothing for me. You know, it does not fit anymore. So, <clears throat> and both these two people that are connected twin flames have to be hooked into their own feeling good no matter what. They cannot have the divine connection in the physical until they've learned to do that. Because otherwise this intense connection would constantly be taking both of them out of that feeling good, which if you're in separation is the reason you separate in the first place because you have to learn this, right? Because that connection is so intense that it's, and it shows you everything. This is why people get confused as well about, is my twin flame a narcissist? It will show you narcissism in some, uh, some stages because you have to be shown what is narcissist, narcissism. And everything is only what it is in the present moment, right? It's not what it's, it's not a, um, Energy is just playing out in the present moment continually, so things can change, right? Things can change and not be what they were, certainly not what they were 14, 15 years ago, seven years ago, not even what they were yesterday, which is why when I said like this interaction that I had, that I know that next time we will talk again, me and my friend, friend of me, <laughs> and that will be, it'll be completely different because it's cleared, it's a, just, it was necessary, it had to happen like that yesterday for me, my process, probably for his as well, like I say. So do you know what I mean? You've got to just keep letting go, keep focusing on your feeling good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Love comes, Knight of Cups. 
when the arrive when you arrive in the light change five of swords in the mind from the dark to the light that's the ending of the battle inside yourself but there's not just one point of enlightenment if there's still a battle going on inside if there's still negativity inside any kind of form of upset anger resentment hatred judgment you know any of that fighting going on inside of yourself that's not enlightenment anything you know basically any thinking because like they say it's only when you pause the thought that you get the higher energy coming through and that's it doesn't have to have any kind of description you know the higher energy it's just feeling good it doesn't have to be okay yeah today I feel good because of this or because of that it's a free energy it's a nothingness it's just I just feel good it's full stop not you know then an elaborate explanation of why you feel good that's not higher energy that's the mind trying to um, justify why it makes why you're feeling good okay so the end point is like we say <clears throat> It's kind of a rival in the light, really. And the, this is, see, this is the Five of Pentacles, also a five, which fives are all about change. And this is a separation, and here's the source. So it's the same thing. It's the arrival in the light. Oh, I've got to tell you as well, I woke up this morning at 5.05. .05. Yeah, forgotten that one. Okay, so um, 5.05. Mm-hmm. It's all coming down to the head of a pin. <clears throat> the magician, manifestation, having everything you need, all your ducks in a row. So have you just been put through a test to see if you have your ducks in a row? And did you have your ducks in a row? So did you have something in your physical experience that manifested through energy that asked you to be in a state of let go rather than a furious state of thinking? and trying to come to a conclusion basically did you remain um, this vortex of let go that is manifestation energy in relation to something that was trying to hook you into something else and at some point even if it wasn't yesterday you will have that because that's what the journey is about ace of swords brand new communication resistance seven of wands so we've got resistance still against what is um, brand new communication. So do you let go of resistance? You let go of everything. You let go of feeling bad. You let go of justifying why you shouldn't feel bad. You let go of anything that is a block to your own feeling good. So it's things that come from other people as well that ask you to feel one way or another about yourself. It's letting go of all of that. It's letting go of anything that happened yesterday, whether that is literally five seconds ago, five minutes ago, five weeks ago, five years ago, 50 years ago. It's letting go of all of that. It's present moment awareness, the lesson of present moment awareness and being located in the right energy to manifest everything that you want into your life and the only thing right that is um that you could say a difference in twin flame connection to the manifestation of a uh, normal law of attraction is that the whole twin flame connection the two people coming together whether that's just briefly to speak or what happens at the end of the process where you come together for a long-lived actual physical connection who, with a person who's a representation of source whether that's someone you know or someone you've not met yet doesn't matter, it's, they're going to be the representation of source they're going to match that vibration as well so the only difference about twin flame and general manifestation whether it be money or possessions is that there's a twin flame connection states there's a particular person that will manifest into your life basically 
there is that representation of source. That's the only difference. So when you hear things about law of attraction and how it will say um, you can't affect somebody else's vibration, that's not true of twin flames because the whole process is about affecting somebody else's vibration because you've got a shared vibration. Does that mean that it's going to be the same person at the beginning that it is at the end? Not necessarily, no. Because energy is everything. So energy doesn't remain stagnant. Energy can just switch from... Well, it's not like it switches. It just is everything. So actually, when you're alive, you see, your vibration is not just... Um, vibration is everything that's no longer in existence on the, in the physical plane. It's everything. It can be everything. It doesn't necessarily mean it's all at once <laughs> inside of you, but it can be, it can come and go because it's, it's fluid. Energies can move without you seeing it and it can become you without you knowing it and it can stop being you without you knowing it. So it can be everybody that's ever lived just literally passing through you at any given point, right? For, for whatever reason. Sometimes the reasons are not even are really hard to come by, actually, the reasons, just because. So, um, because of that reason, it means that you're actually not what you think you are. You're not a solid third dimensional being. You just look like you are. And if anybody's ever seen energy move, then you know that, right? It's like um, you can see it move like, uh, like you see water moving. It's the same thing. As these miraculous things like people walking on hot coals and stuff. I spilled boiling water on my hand a few months ago. I didn't feel it at all. Not at all. So that is, um, you know, how you just know everything is not what it appears to be. Things aren't real, really. So, um, so it's not a given that it will be that same person, but actually at the end of the process it doesn't matter because you're so happy anyway and you feel so good anyway. All you've got to know is that what's coming is a reflection of that. So you're going to love whatever comes because you're in a position, you get the end of the process in, in a position where you love everything anyway. So you're going to get what you love the most coming through and being with you physically. And what, but it's got to get to a point of let go so it can't be something that makes you feel pain. So if you're still in the part of this place in this connection where you're feeling pain in relation to that person that you either told yourself is your twin flame or you know is your twin flame or you'd like it to be a twin flame, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't matter what you call it or what you say it is, it's how it feels, it matters. If you're still in a place where you're in pain then you might not be at the end of the process yet. And the end of the process is where you no longer are in any pain. But you can only get into that position where you're not in any pain by letting go of that person that you think it is. So at the end of the process, it doesn't matter who it is. right? And if you hear that now and you're like, oh my God, but it does, it has to be this person, then it just means that you're still not at the end of the process <laughs> because you're still feeling the pain in relation to what's being said, right? the end of the process you will have let go you won't feel any pain anymore and with that comes more knowing right so as you let go of the physical dimension you increase what is the energetic understanding so despite the fact that you let go of the person who they physically are and you let go of all that pain not in one light go but through a process of shifting it away and you arrive in what is just a feeling good, that is also then al allowing you to receive even more information from source. So it's kind of like then you get even more knowing from source and then you might actually find out, well, it is that person. Or you might find out it's somebody else. You might get a date coming through or a month coming through of when you're going to meet the person or be with the person. Or you might just get a feeling that they're coming, that they are, are on the horizon. But they're coming from your feeling good, not from your pain. So you might get, a, you know, a delightful 
acknowledgement that it is the very person that you always thought it was but I can guarantee you by the time you get to the end of the process whoever it is you're going to be happy about it because you're happy about everything at the end of the process so not to worry about it now if you feel unhappy that somebody's saying that it might not be that person because that's not what matters what matters is your own happiness look happiness and joy equates to the masculine heart and the mastery of the heart Mastery of the heart has to happen in you. It's from your happiness that it comes. Destiny on the full moon. Full moon is a higher energy. It's the enlightenment. It's connection to source. It's feeling good. Destiny comes on feeling good. Manifestation of what is out of reach comes from connecting into source. And the communication, brand new communication, comes on the reducing of all resistance, the lessening of all resistance to feeling good. And in that there's also um, boundaries, right? Boundaries around other people and how, what their expectations are of you. This is the thing about the narcissistic interaction, right? It's always got an agenda. And its agenda is that you must put something outside of yourself first. And you must not f think or feel in any way that you are important in your physical experience. So you must completely sideline yourself in favor of something else. That's what narcissism, that's what its agenda is. And it's not necessarily that always that person that's portraying the narcissist that's going to be asking you to make them the center of your experience and for you to sideline yourself. If that doesn't work, then they will bring in other players, <laughs> bit part actors, and try and make those people the center of your experience so that you no longer put yourself first. Just like my narcissistic interaction did yesterday, when it wasn't working, when the, fit, the love bombing was not making me put that person that I was interacting with as the center of my experience, it then brought in all the bit players that it could possibly find as an attack mode, so it could try to make those the center of my experience but because those, those people aren't in the room and they can't love bomb, it has to be an attack. So it has to be what you said to that person or did to that person that you should feel bad about and make that other person the center of your experience, right? So that's just what narcissism does. It doesn't see who you are. It will never see who you are as a valid human being. So you've got to just disconnect from it. Disconnect boundaries, communication. You could say that's what's just happening, right? That's how you that's how you do it. But you don't have to, you know, there's all this stuff as well. It's like um which can be quite valuable at times. I mean, I've blocked my narcissist number now for a while because I don't want to hear from him or speak to him at least until after the 17th. I'm in process and I know I put myself first, right? But that's not to say I won't unblock him in the future, because I probably will. Well, no, I will. The thing is, it's like, um, but you put yourself first. So you just disconnect. And you don't feel guilty about disconnecting. You put yourself first. What are your needs? Your need to feel good has to come before anything else that's asking you to feel anything else about it. Right? Because the, just the very nature of the third, dim third dimensional energy most people on this planet are working from ego. What, 89%? Probably something like that. Working from ego. And even the ones that think they're working from a spiritual perspective are working from ego. They're working from spiritual narcissism, which still would decree that you sideline yourself and put something else first and do not focus on your feeling good. Right? Most people in the physical dimension are working from the, uh, you could say, third dimensional perspective, egoic perspective, narcissistic, narcissistic perspective, that you would put something else before yourself, right? We could list the things, the institutions that ask you to do that, that try to take you away from your feeling bad. 
everything, the adverts on the TV, the news, the stories about other people, religions, charities, governments, your neighbour, <laughs> your frenemies, your family, you know, a, a lot of things, right? It's all about how you should feel for something else and not for yourself and not focus on your feeling good. How you should worry about something else, put something else before you. So how do you interact then in the physical world if that's what's being asked of you most of the time? With a great deal of respect for the fact that that is happening most of the time. So it doesn't mean you have to like be the antagonist and the aggressor and try and fight it off and um, chase it down and become its accuser, right? It just means that you disconnect from it and you know what it is and you let go and you feel good, right? And you let it do its, you let it do its thing. That energy moving through that person, that narcissistic energy moving through that person that's looking for somebody to lock down into a feeling bad or only have a feeling good in relation to it, you just disconnect and you don't let it take you away from yourself and your vibration. It'll go refocus on something else and someone else and do it to somebody else. Because that's what it does. You know, it doesn't see race, religion, creed, colour, <laughs> sex. It doesn't see gender. It doesn't. It's an energy. It's a narcissistic energy. All it sees is what it wants and to get what it wants. So you just dis you just know that and you disconnect. You don't let it have one single tiny little piece of you, because it will take your feeling good no matter what in whatever way it's going to take it. it. It either will own your feeling good or it will take it away from you completely and make you feel bad because that is its agenda that's what that energy does and sometimes it will show itself through people you know and sometimes it will stay in the person you know and it will stay there for their whole life and sometimes it will not stay in the person that you know and it will shed it from that person because everything is everything is everything that's energy and it can even move through you and I've seen it move through people I've seen it move through people. I've done sessions with people where it's been moving through them, the narcissistic energy, you know, and maybe it's showing me something and maybe it's moving through them because they're clearing it, because it's part of their bloodline, their heritage, their lineage, their genealogy, and maybe also just because it's dark energy, it's narcissistic energy, it's mental energy, it's ego, and it only clears by moving through something physical. It cannot clear if it doesn't move through something physical. Because energy represented in the physical dimension has to be physical. It can't be anything that. And the only things that have a brain that would contain narcissistic energy are human beings, not animals. So it cannot move through an animal in that way. Although saying that, I've got a sneaking suspicion that Charlie the cat <laughs> might be a little bit <laughs> narcissistic. No, he's just on a very short loop. And he thinks that he's, he doesn't understand how long ago it was that he had a tree. So he comes in, turns up, and then five minutes later he's back on the window still looking for another one. Because he doesn't understand <laughs> that he's just had one, bless him. Okay, but he does have some issues. Okay, right, that's it, is it? Have we got there now? Oh. <laughs> 17. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'm going to put one more down on here. <gasps> Excuse me. <laughs> Twin flames, two of cups. All right, so there we have it. And we will see, won't we? We will see. So we've got to remain and let go. We've got to feel good, just because that's what we've got to do, not because of anything else. And um, I just want to share another thing as well going on, aren't I? What time is it, Mr. Wolf? Oh, okay, it's an hour. That should be all right. So, um... You clear confusion, right? So I had this thing happen, and it was a while ago, 
and I bought some shoes and I wanted to send them back and I sent them to the wrong place and it didn't clear that issue for about a month and eventually the, the wrong place lost them <laughs> and then they've, they've paid me for them so it's very nice of them to do that but uh, I got the money back basically so it took a while for that to clear that issue and of me sending these things to the wrong place and then uh, also during this moon I had had returned something and when I look online at the tracking for the thing that I returned it said that it was going to completely the wrong place so I felt confused really confused because I used a QR code so it meant that I didn't even see where it was going to I just printed that out at the machine in the shop and stuck the label on the parcel and it was going should be going to the right place because it comes from a QR code on my phone that's sent from the place that I'm returning it to so there shouldn't be any possibility of it going to the wrong place so I flew out of my feeling good vibration into a load of fear I started literally rattling my body was shaking um, because I had um, believing myself to have done exactly the same stupid thing that I did pretty much a month ago of sending something back to the wrong to the wrong place and um, I just felt really really confused confused and fearful and it all worked out it was completely it was just showing me something that I needed to see so I could go into a load of fear and shock and confusion <laughs> right so it was again this physical dimension was showing me that it had gone to this place and it hadn't gone to that place at all it had gone to the right place so the physical dimension was assisting me into experiencing again the same fear that I'd gone through before recently a confusion around that fear which basically confusion is panic and anxiety around that fear and a believing myself to be absolutely and completely stupid because I was repeating the same mistake again despite the fact that I'd gone through that issue and in some way that is clearing me through to my reunion because of what's got to go on in my inside my twin what has to go on inside of him so only from looking at that physical experience can you read what has to go on with him right so what has to go on with him well he needs to feel a great deal of panic and anxiety about contacting me and confusion as to maybe why he's doing it again panic and anxiety fear that he maybe is making the same mistake again because he's not the first time he would have ever contacted me right so what you're experiencing in your physical dimension whatever that is in relation to fear panic confusion is what you're clearing for them always it's never an accident right it's never because you're stupid <laughs> and you're making the same mistake again it's because you have to go, do these things and go through these things for these shifts to occur in the one that you're connected to right so see it as that and know it's that and love it all even like I say I went through that and it was literally for about 10 minutes I was shaking Rat I felt like I was rattling shaking palpitating all this fear coming through my physical body so it's not like okay well that's really bad I felt that fear and uh, I shouldn't oh god that's I'm getting it all wrong and I shouldn't be feeling it like that and now I hate myself even more because I'm letting myself feel the fear no it's not that because you have to go through that and that person can't do what they've got to do unless you go through that so you just do it you know for what it's for and you let go of feeling any way which way about it and then you just love it because you know it's shifting something right you just love it and then you can laugh about it and you can laugh at the amazing beautifulness of all the amazing shifts that come in and everything that's asking you right to be one way or another so like I say I had my narcissistic interaction where I kept myself completely at one with myself and dis not, did not disconnect at all. That actually came after the fear thing, which came, I had them all in one day. The fear thing came in the morning, right? The woman with the baby, she came in the midday and then my narcissistic connection came in the evening. So, but the fear thing, you know, like I say, I did go out of vibration, 
I had to experience all the fear. So there's, you'll do these services. It's service work. It's all the work on the connection, every single thing you go through. You just got to learn to love it all and to see it all as that and then you can be disconnected from it all even after it's you know as it's after it's moved through you whatever it is the fear that sometimes has to come just like the physical pain has to come in one way or another so you know you stub your toe you think you just stubbed your toe for because it's an accident no you, because you have to feel some kind of physical pain that's a representation of the pain of the separation from source pain is pain it's just pain it doesn't matter it's mental emotional physical it's the same thing, separation from feeling good. And energy is erratic and energy comes through in mysterious and miraculous ways, right? But when you're in twin flame connection and you're going through twin flame process, there's no accidents, none. Everything has a reason because you're in, you are a process. So if you just stop referring to yourself by name <clears throat> as a person, and know that you are a p process, then that will make it all a lot easier, basically. Just disconnect. <laughs> Completely disconnect from being a person, right? And uh, you know, and then you, you definitely aren't gonna be getting hooked into anybody else and what they're gonna tell you you are, right? Okay, lots of love. Let's see what happens. Okay, um, readings. Sessions. There's a, there's all the information description box below. Okay. Bye.